Some people called him Monster Brant, but in reality, he was the dedicated leader of a native nation, a warrior, a diplomat, and a scholar who has largely been forgotten in history. So who is the real Joseph Brandt? He was born Theandonesia in Ohio country around 1743, into a world split between the traditions of his people and the influence of European settlers. Joseph Brandt, as he later became known, was a tribal leader of the Mohawk Nation, part of the Iroquois Confederacy. At a young age, he was selected to attend a school for native people, which would eventually become Dartmouth College. There, he studied English, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, adding them to the three or four Iroquois languages he already spoke. He also converted to Anglican Christianity, though his priority was always to secure the future of the Iroquois people. But on the frontiers of North America, that was far from easy. The Iroquois occupied vital territory, and just like in the French and Indian War, they would have to choose sides. And having previously led war parties against the French troops, Brandt believed that the British could be trusted to protect the Iroquois' interests. Early in the war, Brandt traveled to England, where he met with King George III and discussed the terms of siding with the British. In 1777, he assembled a fighting force of native warriors and white loyalists into a group known as Brandt's Volunteers. They became so successful at raiding pro-patriot settlements in the Mohawk Valley that Brandt gained his nickname, Monster, and the attention of the Continental Army Commander-in-Chief. George Washington charged General John Sullivan with the total destruction and devastation of their settlements and the capture of as many prisoners of every age and sex as possible. At the Battle of Newtown, Brandt's volunteers were defeated, and Sullivan's troops went on to lay waste at Mohawk lands. Ultimately, the Iroquois' loyalty to the British went unrewarded when negotiations for the Treaty of Paris ignored all of their claims of sovereignty. Determined to realize his vision of founding an independent confederacy of Indian nations in Ohio country, Brandt began negotiating with the new United States and even met with Washington in 1792. But any promises that the Americans made were soon broken. Brandt died in 1807 in the one area of land that the British granted to the Mohawk people, a town that still bears his name, Brantford, Ontario, 